Hi, hello, welcome back to another video. So, the first thing I'm going to talk about is my shirt because I know that a lot of people they're going to say, Oh, Raheem, could I press the shirt? And my company camera, no, I could not press it. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I won't even blabber much, I really want to get into this video when you are solo traveling, how to book cheap flights and how to get around to places, especially if you have never been there before. <laughs> So the first thing that I believe you should do when you are going into a country that you've never visited before is research how much money you should bring. So for instance, your hotel accommodation, if you're not going to stay with a family or a friend, think about the money you will be spending on food. Think about the money you'll be spending on doing activities. Um, if something comes up and think about every worst case scenario reason is you don't want to go and then you end up especially if you are a type of person who you act off budget or do what you are doing on budget you don't want to go somewhere and then end up overspending because you didn't think about something first or think about like what if this happens and what if that happens which is why i got stuck in paris but it was my first time solo traveling and that's how i learned my lesson and i want to help you guys to not make that same mistake you do your research make sure you take enough money with you if you are going to be taking with you a thousand us dollars i'd probably say take at least 500 dollars more just to be safe but make sure that you only spend what you need um that extra 500 dollars is just for emergency right so for instance when i went to paris um i had to like book a hotel because that i didn't even need to do if i had like researched everything that I needed to do because I missed my bus that was supposed to take me back to London. I ended up having to wait for the whole night and hoping I don't have to like stay for the rest of the week or stay for a few more days because I wouldn't have had that money or I wouldn't have planned to spend that amount of money that I'd probably have to spend like getting the hotel to stay and all of that. So because I missed my bus, I ended up having to book a hotel and then I'd have to you know, like book another ticket to go back to London and then I had to um, book um, another COVID test and then I had to do like a lot of things. Um, so that kind of like took me about about two, $200. It's, a lot of people would say, oh, you should have that's a lot of spend, but I didn't intend to spend that much more money, you know? And I think about the worst case scenarios. What if you miss the flight? Will you be able to like get another hotel or go somewhere else and the amount of money you'd have to pay. So think about all of that, right? So have extra money and research where you're going, research how much money something will take and make sure you take sufficient cash. Or if you have credit card, whatever it is, just make sure you have enough money. So that's one down. And the second one would be try to book the cheapest flight. Now with me, it's a lot of people will I guess a lot of people they're they're against it only because they don't like the stops and this and that but honestly you are going somewhere i get that you're excited but what's the rush right if you can spend less money getting to the place you'll have that extra money to do whatever you want to do when you get there so when i was in london that's when i decided to go to paris so what i did was i checked like all my different options to go because it's like not that far away from London, right? Because you have a train that will go there um, and you have bus that will go there, you can take the plane. So you have three different options. I'm not really sure if you have any other option, but I know plane, train, and bus, right? So I checked, what I usually use is Google Flights. I'll be talking about that just a little bit further. Um, but I use Google Flights to check um, the cheapest flights and i also checked like the different bus companies i checked flix and i checked romeo i'm not sure if romeo is in the us but um that was also there in london but i know that flix is in the us because when i got here i checked because i wanted to go to washington dc last year after i came from london back to new york plane check google flights um expedia Priceline, secondly, check the bus. I could check like Romeo, check the different bus companies in your country um, and you'll see your different options. They're usually 
way cheaper than the plane ticket. The train was super expensive, that was out of it. The train even more expensive than the flight. You ever heard this before? I think it's the underwater train and I could not afford it. It was like £300 or something like that to go and come. Even though it was, it was like the fastest option aside from the plane. But no, I'm sorry, I wasn't going to pay 300 and something pounds. When I went on a bus company site and I saw rides for like $70, $60. Yeah, and that's to go to Paris. So from London to Paris, return ticket is £70, right? And I was like, you have got to be kidding me. And that was when I was like, ooh, I'm definitely going. I saw that price, I was like, miss out Paris because of 70 pound i'm like no so what i did was i was like okay i have this extra money because i, I did have a budget when i go to london what i did was i sent my money to my sister so she could keep it and only she can only send that to me if i'm in an emergency and i need the help which was a good thing because if you know that you don't have proper money management and you're probably just going to spend 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 and me just going to london and seeing so many things and everything just dazzling my eyes i'm like ooh nice oh i want to i've never seen that before can i get that can we go there can we go there can i get that like i feel like everything plus everything in london was so pricey but what i did was i eventually booked the cheapest thing so the bus was like seven hours something to go to paris from london but i was like nothing is wrong with that why because if you're taking the plane there is no view you're not seeing anything and i'm like I want this experience to like go when I'm going I, I can see and pass through different places and I eventually ended up going on a ship and we had to pass certain places in France and stuff so think about like how you can enjoy it so don't look at the time think about how you can enjoy it and how you can make the experience worth it so it was like the bus ride was like seven or something so like the bus and then when we passed the border we went on um, a ship um, with the bus and everything go over reach into france come off like a few hours more and stuff like that but it was really worth it because then i saw like a lot of places i passed through a lot of places so think about how you can make experience worth it and the time worth it so those are two things research where you are going and make sure that you budget out everything and make sure that you have sufficient money all right just in case anything happens and then secondly check google flights check your bus companies or if there's any train available to take you to your destination in your country, check that also. Don't look at the time, just choose the best option. And if the time is like eight hours or something, you can do it. I promise you, you sleep, um, you use a phone, just have power banks and stuff like that. You'll be perfectly fine. However, I think I may need to do like a part two in this video, but I'm just going to get to Google Flights first and then I'll just end it. So why I love using Google Flights more than even Priceline or Expedia, I still do use them because I want to be able to like match up the different prices and stuff like that. But why I prefer to use Google Flights is because they also show you the different airlines that give you the cheapest prices on a specific day. So Monday through to Saturday, well, Sunday through to Saturday, they're going to show you on each day that you want to travel. They're going to tell you, all right, there's a flight here for $253. Tuesday, they're going to tell you there's a flight there for $453. And then they're going to tell you, say, Thursday, there's a flight. So straight throughout the week, they're going to show you the different prices for each flight. So whereas, you know, you have um, Priceline and Expedia, you don't get the option to see unless you select a specific day. And that's like a bit time consuming to have to input a certain date and then refresh it and refresh it choose a different date to refresh choose a different day to refresh and google flights actually show you all the different airlines once it's available and they show you the cheapest ones too so i think it's like the best search engine when you are booking your flights because you have a lot of options and you are able to track flights and all of that like if you know that you don't want to buy the ticket right now you have the option to select the date and then turn on the reminder you see a ticket for 653 but you're not ready to travel and you're not ready to buy the ticket you're probably waiting on it to go down 
So instead of going back to the site every single minute to see if it go down, you just turn on the thing. They have this switch to, ju to just turn it on so they can just email you and tell you when there is a lower flight. Great. Yeah. So um, I think there are a few more things I want to tell you about like when you're solo traveling and the cheapest way to do it and to be wise when you're doing it. So because this is getting so long, I'm just going to do it in another video. But there is a lot more I want to share with you and how to do it. So until then, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.